Geothermal is seen as one of the best options for a clean green power source. But for carbon zero electricity retailer Ecotricity, geothermal energy is dirty energy. It says low emissions are not good enough and because geothermal runs all the time, its carbon volume is a problem. New Zealand really needs to reduce the emissions that that's, are coming from the electricity sector, which includes coal, gas and geothermal. And we see that wind and solar in particular are the best ways to reduce the emissions for New Zealand at a rapid pace. Um, by introducing more geothermal into the grids, it's going to take a much longer period to get rid of the emissions out of, out of uh, the New Zealand's uh, energy sector. So, we think that wind and solar in particular are the best ways to reduce emissions for New Zealand. But the geothermal industry sees itself as a proven step towards a carbon neutral energy sector. It argues geothermal fields emit carbon dioxide anyway, with power stations sometimes merely hastening the escape of pockets of gas underneath. One thing that we have to consider is that any geothermal field, whether we put a power station on top of it, or if it lives on its own, i.e. Rotorua or Waiatapu, even the, uh, the maunga down at Tangariro or Ruapehu, they emit C uh, carbon dioxide naturally. When we extract power from them, we do bring up a little bit more CO2, but over the life of those geothermal fields, we actually have modeling that shows that it's more or less neutral from what it would do on its own. So that underground gas would come up anyway? It's gonna come up anyway. How do you know? We don't know specifically what those timescales are. It's kind of a chicken and the egg discussion because we only measure them now coming out of our power stations because we measure them. But before we, uh, we actually capture that and before we actually uh, utilize the energy coming from underground, we weren't able to measure it. We do have some uh, large scale surveys from Rotorua that show that there is a lot of natural CO2 that comes from the ground. Same out at Fakari at White Island, another geothermal field here in the, uh, the Topo volcanic zone, that they, they do emit quite a bit of CO2 on their own, whether or not we as humans touch them or not. At Wairake Field, first harvested in the 1950s, carbon emissions have dropped, likely because a pocket of gas has vented. The emissions gap narrows further between geothermal and hydro, solar and wind when whole of life emissions are taken into account. But two geothermal fields measure alarmingly high. The worst is Ohaki power station north of Taupo, recording carbon emissions almost as high as some fossil fuel plants. Could Ohaki's emissions be mitigated? Oh, that's where we want to get to. Um, well, first, we're going to start this trial at Tohoka, prove that we can do it, address the risks that are involved. It's not a, if there's some technical challenges. From that trial at Tohoka, we want to look at how we can adapt or apply what we've learned there to all our other power stations. Now, you squirt water underground to get the steam to come up. How hard would it be to just put another pipe down to, to get rid of all the gases? So there's some challenges with the pressures that you need to maintain within the process flow to keep the gases in, in the water stream essentially and not um, exolving out or bubbling out. Um, and with that it carries, we've got to make sure that we're not corroding equipment too quickly, um, that we don't introduce scaling risks and scaling risk is where these minerals deposit out underground and can then block up the, the fractures that we're actually putting the fluid back into. And we want to avoid things like uh, CO2 coming out of the fluid too early, partly down the well, which can cause what we call an airlock and where you can't actually push any more fluid down the well. And these are the kind of technical challenges we want to make sure that we're addressed and we're comfortable with before we go to every single one of our stations. You don't want to gum up your own yeah. field. The potential for greater use of geothermal's leftover heat by surrounding industries further improves its green credentials. It's an industry full of geologists, proud to be displacing fossil fuels worldwide. And thanks to the emissions trading scheme, there's a financial incentive for the industry to have fewer emissions. In fact, there's a chance for geothermal energy to become carbon negative. When some of these power stations were built, 30, 60, 10 years ago, we didn't think of CO2 as being as, as 
mass of a problem for geothermal as it is. As each generated, generation has fallen off, coal's fallen off, gas is starting to fall off, I don't think geothermal is ever going to fall off because it's got a huge benefit, as I've, as I've spoken to. But we didn't design them to capture the gases, but the technology exists. We just need to apply a little bit of Kiwi know-how and get those gases back underground from where they came. And are there trials taking place? There are trials taking place. There's an awesome group within the industry who's looking at how to put those gases underground to, to abate the carbon emissions. If we look overseas to our colleagues in Iceland, they're actually capturing CO2, putting it in fluid and putting it underground and turning that CO2 into rock in human timescales where they've actually drilled wells where you can see that CO2 has actually locked itself away as carbon in, the, in these subsurface. We could, we could do it here in New Zealand. It's just a matter of getting our, putting our brains into it and actually doing it. Ecotricity won't be interested in geothermal until it has zero carbon emissions. Ecotricity is majority owned by Genesis Energy, which owns the coal and gas burning Huntley Power Station. But as ecotricity grows, Yates says Genesis has been forced to provide more and more green energy. Patrick O'Sullivan, Local Focus.